The pinhole camera is the most basic type of camera. It consists simply of a light tight box and a pinhole in that light tight box. The light will come through the pinhole and project on the back of the can and so the back of the can is where we need to place our paper. The first thing you'll need to do is cut your paper to fit. The pinhole camera is the most basic type of camera. It is simply a light tight box with a single tiny pinhole as your lens. In order to create a photograph with our pinhole camera, we need to place a light sensitive surface inside this can. In this case, our light sensitive surface is going to be photo paper. Remember that photo paper is light sensitive, so it needs to be loaded in a dark room with the lights off. But first I'm going to show you with the lights on how to load paper in the can. After you've trimmed your paper, and I'll show you that in a second, locate the white stripe in the back of the can. This white stripe is located almost immediately across from where the pinhole is. So if you center your paper over that white stripe, it means that your paper will be centered in front of the pinhole. To insert it into the can, bend it slightly so it fits through the opening, and place it covering that white stripe that you can see in the back of the can. Now let's do this in the dark room. Before we can load our photo paper into the pinhole camera, we need to trim it. Start with a sheet of 5x7 photo paper. We're going to trim this down to 4x7. Here on the paper cutter, I've already marked with masking tape some common measurements. You will be referring to this short piece of masking tape that says pinhole on it. Raise the blade and slide your paper under the red hand guard until it lines up with that pinhole masking tape. Place your left hand on the paper to hold it, making sure that you're nowhere near the blade, and then lower the blade to cut your paper. Now we're ready to take it over and load it in the pinhole camera. Now I'm ready to load my camera with the paper I just cut. Remove the lid, locate that white stripe in the back of the camera. That's going to show you where you need to position the center of your paper. When you place your paper in the camera, remember that the light sensitive side of the paper needs to be facing the pinhole. So the emulsion side of the paper is the glossy or shiny side. Curve your paper so it fits through the opening. So my shiny side is inside the curve and place my paper centered over where that white stripe is. Now, when the light comes through my little pinhole lens, it's going to shine through the camera across the middle and hit my paper on the other side. Put your lid on nice and tight. A few of the cameras have loose lids, so double check that yours isn't going to fall off and you're ready to take your camera out and make an exposure. Once your pinhole camera has been loaded with a piece of photo paper in the dark room, you're ready to take it out and make a photograph. This is not a perfect process. You might need to experiment a little bit to find just the right shutter time. Remember, the shutter time means how long my shutter will be open. In the case of our pinhole cameras, we will be measuring our shutter speeds in minutes. Because we're using such a slow shutter speed, you do need a tripod, or in this case, you simply need to set your camera on top of a surface. If you try to hold your camera for this long exposure, your photograph will come out blurry. Decide what you want to take a picture of and position your camera. Then remove the shutter and simply wait a few minutes. In this case, it's an overcast day. I'm going to wait about three minutes before I put the shutter back on my camera and take it into the darkroom. At the end of my three minutes, I can take my camera, replace the shutter, being careful to cover that pinhole, 
It doesn't actually matter that I've moved it a little bit to put the shutter back on because the exposure was so long and the movement happened so quickly that none of that is going to show up in my photograph. Now I'm ready to return to the darkroom and develop my print. Okay, so I've brought my pinhole camera back into the darkroom. Now all I need to do is remove my photo paper and take it to the sink to be developed. Here I am at the developer. When we place a print in the developer, you want to start with one end and very quickly slide the print in and then I'm quickly going to grab a pair of tongs and push my print to the bottom. Now I'm going to start agitating and I will time this for 60 seconds while I agitate gently. Already you can see my image start to appear. We don't have to be as precise with the chemicals in this project as we will when we're actually making prints from negatives. In the developer my image started to turn black pretty quickly so I'm going to pull it out just shy of 60 seconds since it's already dark enough. Normally we would not do that, we'd leave it in for the full time. 10 seconds in the stop bath, then I will move my print to the fixer, agitate for 30 seconds, and turn the lights on to check my exposure. After 30 seconds in the fix and a quick dip in the wash, I've moved my print to a tray. Remember never to bring wet prints out of the sink area without a tray. And now I'm in a lighted area to check my exposure. As you can see, my trees and the cars showed up pretty well, but the sky is a little dark. This is still a fairly decent pinhole print. If I wanted to make another attempt, I would probably shorten my shutter speed time by about 60 seconds or so. I printed this for three minutes, so I might try a minute and a half or two minutes and see if that gives me a print with a little bit more detail in the sky. Don't forget to return your print to the fixer for the remaining two minutes of the time. This has only been in there for 30 seconds, so now I'm going to put it back in the fixer for the remaining two minutes.